Welcome back to Bonanza Disc Golf. Today we're going to be talking about off-season training, how I want to add 100 distance this off-season, and how you can too. So I really just have one thing to say. Welcome to Project 100. Oh, I didn't even mean to park it, but I kind of parked it. If you guys have been on the channel a little bit recently, you might have heard of Project 100 because I teased it a little last week. It's basically gonna be my off-season training plan that I wanna invite you guys into. To not only see how I progress, because I'm trying to play a couple pro tour events next year, doing a full tour in 2024, and I just started playing disc golf this January, so not even 10 months ago. And to do that, obviously, you're gonna have to do some work. So I'm creating a plan and a Facebook group that you guys can all join. And so today, we're gonna be doing our baseline test of kind of where I am right now and my plan to get the extra 100 feet of distance, which for me is throwing consistently over 500 feet. To do this, there's three main tenets of Project 100. One is going to be averaging 100 putts a day over the off season. We're also gonna do the baseline putting later. Two, doing at least one field work session per week. And then third is going to be doing at least one non-disc golf workout per week. Because your fitness is also important, even though sometimes it feels like we're just chucking discs. But I'm gonna go ahead and throw these next two and then we're going to get our minimum distance, not our average distance, to kind of see where our baseline is in terms of golf shots, not crazy distance lines. We're gonna do that backhand and forehand real fast. And then I'll explain more about Project 100 and everything that's gonna be going on with it and how you can get involved. Probably not super ideal to be doing this into a headwind, but I'm throwing graces here. I would just take three of your farthest flying golf shot distances and just act like this is a tee pad. So nothing crazy, no max like distance craziness. Just trying to throw good, consistent shots and see how far those are pushing. I think normally for me, that's right over 400 feet. I might need to just move us completely to the other field because I did not realize there was a walking path here. This is a good time to talk about kind of my philosophy for Project 100 here, which is that sometimes just the concept of field work can feel really intimidating. Like, oh, how much do I have to do? How long does it have to be? And you know that you need to work out and eat well to get really good at disc golf. You also know that you need to putt a lot. Obviously, the more you do, the better you're going to feel, the better you're going to get fast as long as you stay healthy and do it in a smart way. But this can really only take you maybe like one or two days a week to get done because I'm not even saying you have to putt every single day. I'm saying to average 100 putts a day. Obviously, the more days you do it, the more consistent you'll be. But I don't want Project 100 to feel like something that's unattainable for you. If you work a lot, if you have a family, it's something that maybe will take 15, 20 minutes per day if that or maybe one hour two days out of the week because especially if you just want to get a little bit better beat all your buddies this is something that you can join into and before you start if you want i'm going to leave links down in the description something for you to copy it's a google sheet to track yourself as you do project 100 because i'm also thinking about doing weekly giveaways for the people who complete it i'm gonna be throwing three orbit graces which are kind of my farthest flying discs. They are 11 speeds, so your farthest flying disc, even over 400 feet, doesn't need to be 12 or 13 speed. But we're gonna do three backhands and then three forehands. I was thinking about doing out of five, but three I think will give you a good idea, and we're not taking the average here. So on the spreadsheet, the first thing that you'll see is your starting backhand distance. You can put average there if you want to, just for yourself, but I like doing minimum golf line because that kind of gives you a baseline. If you're throwing one 400, one 410, one 450, your minimum golf distance is gonna be in that 400 range. If you really get a hold of one, you can definitely reach out to that 450, but this is more to feel confident if you walk up to a 400 foot hole, you can park it. It's gotta be something that you feel comfortable throwing on the disc golf course. It's way high. That's a good rip. Oh, that's got sat down though. Okay, I'm gonna leave my bag here, go range those. Honestly, wasn't as consistent as I like to be, and it's hard to do this in the wind as well, but sometimes you play in the wind, sometimes you're not gonna be able to just take whenever to do field work, and you have to use what you got, which is why one of the things I'm really gonna try to use in the off season is some sort of training net, because I think training nets will be super helpful, because then you don't have to like walk this far. It is still good to definitely see the discs fly, but in terms of form work, which is one of the things that we're gonna talk about, it'd just be really helpful to get a lot of reps in fast and not have to walk far. But also when we're talking about form, one thing that I want you to do every time that you do a field work session, and this is how it will count, is to record yourself throwing at least a couple shots and watch it back. You don't have to like do any in-depth analysis, but doing that will just really help you to get an idea of how you throw the disc. And then when you hear people talking about doing this and doing that, you'll be able to have either already looked at your footage or look back at your footage to get a good idea of how to implement that for yourself or if you're already doing it well. But that brings me to a really cool point, which is one of the things I wanna do because I'm not an expert. I just started playing disc golf 10 months ago. And yeah, like I understand a little bit about why I throw far. One of the things I totally got wrong in the last video that you might be here from 
is one of my patrons who has a background in kinesiology said that it's a lot less about fast twitch muscle fibers and a lot more about proprioception, I think is the word, where like how fast your body is able to communicate with your muscles. And it's basically coordination is all that is. So I, I've always felt coordinated. So I guess it's coordination more than fast twitch muscle fibers. So take that for what you will. Saying 385, not great at all. 410, pretty average, nothing crazy. And that's kind of where I feel confident. It's kind of interesting because my last tournament, I had a couple 440 foot shots that I parked, but I would say that this is why I was gonna call it Project 500. This last one isn't gonna count because I totally just threw super nose up and shanked it. But I would say for me, based on having thrown more, and if you haven't gotten your actual distance yet, you definitely should take these three discs out and do this, yep, 367. But I'd say for me, if I see a 410, 420 foot hole, I feel confident about stepping up, throwing a consistent golf shot and getting there. Also one thing to note, right now I'm on very little food. And so before you do this, I would make sure that you actually fuel your body because you will definitely notice you play different when your body is fueled and has some hydration in you. That being said, I'm gonna call it about 410 for myself. 410, 420, I know that's where I can reach. I know in tournaments I've reached 440, 450 because I'm a lot more focused than I am when I'm filming in a video. I'm real quick and do the same thing for the forehand, which I'm also not, I'm not as confident in. My forehand is not great. That's gonna be the first thing that we work on in this series because that's what I'm working on myself, maybe with some help from a cool disc golf channel as well. But I would still throw these graces, these orbit graces on my forehand, so that's what we're gonna throw. I'm really hoping for about 350 consistency here, but I'm not 100% sure. And then we'll get into what to do with this information and a few of the last things about Project 100 for the first week before I move into what's next. Just gonna go ahead and throw from next to this so that we can range this. Not trying to focus on any big shots, just straight, turn a little bit and come back. That's a little better. There we go. That's a much better showing than what I did with the backhand. I was also very worried about this fence on that. I definitely say I'm a little more consistent. We got one here, we got one here, and we got one just a little short of that. This definitely will tell me how far I'm throwing forehands when I'm focusing on golf lines. Really? Woo, that is saying 325. I know I've reached like up to 360, 380 before, but man, whee! 331, 335. 325 looks like it's what my forehand distance is right now. This definitely might change if I did a different field work session with different winds and whatnot, but yeah, that's a little shorter than what I expected. I expect it to be th closer to 340, 350, but I mean, this is the reality of it. I'm thinking I'm throwing my backhand around 410, 420, my forehand around 320 to 340. Gonna try to work from there. Let's talk about how we're gonna do that. So I think that totally just goes to show you golf distance versus max distance, because in my distance contest, I threw one 470, 461, 450, and like when I'm really trying to get a hold of one, I can't get it out there but I don't wanna to have to be throwing max distance. And none of these shots that I threw today, like you heard me really grunting crazy, cause I'm just kind of throwing golf lines. And that's what I really wanted to focus on instead of trying to get out there and rip it as hard as I can, throw what I would comfortably throw on a course to feel controlled. So if your max distance is 50, 60 feet more, like mine is on both forehand and backhand when I really get a hold of one, don't write that down. Write down your golf distance cause that's what we're trying to improve. And here's how. The two major pieces of Project 100 that are really gonna affect this are going to be your field work session every single week. And I'm going to have more and more information about how to do those better. Because honestly, I'm not great at doing field work sessions. So anything I tell you is gonna be unpracticed by me. We are right by an airport. All I do know though, is the more you practice something, the better you're gonna get. And that means the more you practice something bad, the more you're gonna get at doing it bad, which is why we really wanna work on looking at our form for forehand and back. You don't have to focus on both forehand and backhand in Project 100. I would say, especially if you don't have all the time, to focus on one. Try to add 100 feet of distance to your backhand or to your forehand. We're also gonna work on accuracy and things, but for me right now, since I'm trying to play on the Pro Tour, my distance isn't elite enough to get there. If I have a 425 foot forehand and a 510 foot consistent easy backhand, then I'm a little bit more in consideration, which is why I'm working on that. But if you just wanna work on one, Go ahead and do that. So our fieldwork sessions are gonna definitely evolve. And if you have any tips for that, go ahead and leave them down in the comments as well as on the Facebook. Because for me, it was just getting out there and throwing big shots. I also didn't do something that I'm gonna recommend that you do because I honestly forgot as I was just filming in the heat of filming the video, but that is warming up by throwing putters first. I always throw putters first, then mids. Those first shots were literally on no warmups. But doing your fieldwork session, recording some of your throws and watching them back is mandatory to complete your I did a fieldwork session part. But throughout the whole process, I'm gonna be bringing on a lot of other coaches and experts to help us with form work, with field work, and then with other parts of the game. So if you are one of those coaches and you wanna be a part of this, reach out to me over on Instagram or my email. But this is also why 
I want to really focus in on doing one non-disc golf workout per week, something I'm sure we'll discuss a little bit more in these Project 100 videos every single Saturday, as well as in the Facebook group. So go ahead and join that if you haven't already. Also, all this is completely free, not putting it behind any paywalls or anything. I just want everybody to get better together, but I also do have Patreon and my own Tour Series discs if you still wanted to pick any of those up and support the channel during this whole process. But that leads us into arguably the most important part of disc golf, which is putting. Now I've heard people say that to get really good at putting, you need to be putting three to 500 times a day or like an hour a day. And there was a period of time when I was planning on making a video called, I made 100,000 putts, here's how long it took. And I maybe made a couple thousand of those and it's like, this is just so much work every single day. I did get good at putting and that's one of the reasons why I feel like I'm a pretty solid putter now. But I don't think you need to be that crazy about it because I think if you get the same amount of reps in over a longer period of time, it'll still work for you. Maybe not as fast, but this whole Project 100 is gonna last four months. That's one of the reasons why on our baseline sheet, I have a putting section, which is very important to see where you are now and also where you wanna go. And I'm gonna show you that whole routine and workout pretty much right here and give you how long it's gonna take because we're about to putt 100 putts. We're gonna go from 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and 45 feet. I would definitely recommend doing this part not in the wind, but I have a, an interesting little headwind right now. Also that basket is leaning, not you guys. But the way that we're gonna do this, and I'm only gonna do it with two putters, even though I have a ton of putters, is we're gonna putt 20 times from everywhere inside the circle and then 10 times from 35 feet and 45 feet. But I really want us to work on both inside and outside circle putting during Project 100. This really sucks, it's a lot of headwind. I'm gonna start a timer right now and then start my 100 putts and just see how long it takes to putt 100 times. Because what I'm asking you to do in Project 100 is one of two things. For me, it's going to be make 100 putts average per day. For you, it can either be make 100 putts average or putt 100 times a day. I would just recommend to not be missing the majority of your putts. So if you're missing all your putts, move in and make all those putts until you're making a majority, then move back a little bit and make those because you don't want to practice missing. Practicing circle two and trying to dial it in, that's okay. But really try not to practice missing, try to practice making putts. And once you get out circle two, making is kind of like 30, 40%. Inside the circle, it should be closer to above half. Well, let's just see how long it takes to putt 100 times with only two discs. Starting now. All right, not a super great showing. 18 for 20, missed two bad ones, but let's move back to 20 feet. 18 for 20 again. All right, moving on up in the world. Oh man, I do take a lot more time on these last ones because I think about them a lot more. I'm not nearly as good at them. Four for six so far, hopefully we don't miss more. Whee. Okay, I'm at 10 out of 19. I need to make this last one. 11, so bad, so, so bad. 30 feet, this is where I sometimes go between straddling and stepping. I feel like I can get a little more pop stepping, but I feel like I can also get their straddle, I just need to practice more, and I've not been practicing putting for the past month and a half. Stay up. Whoa. Nine for 20 is not the worst in the world. Definitely means I need work from that 25 to 30 foot distance. Any more putts? Because we only do 10 each from 35 and 45. I'm a step putter, so I'm gonna be step putting. Yeah, let's hope that we can get at least 40%. No, three over 10. All right, now from 45. Let's get three here at least again. All right, we gotta make the last one. We gotta get at least two of these guys. <laughs> All right, good thing to know, 45 feet, it's only up to go. I just picked up my bag and everything for a second and it's only been 19 minutes and 24 seconds. To do 100 putts, talk to the camera, do all this. So I'd say 20 to 25 minutes a day is what you would need. Also just remembered, if you don't have a practice basket and you want one, I'll leave a link to the one that I use down below. Really easy to set up and tear down. It is an affiliate link, so you support the channel if you got it, but you can probably just get one at your local course, but it's nice to have one at home too. What I would probably say is if you're wanting to do this, I would do about 500 putts from inside the circle, maybe 600, 600 from inside the circle, 100 from outside the circle. Unless you're starting to really get your circle one dialed. I made 70% of my inside the circle putts, which is not a good rate, but if you're looking at 15, 20 feet, which is where you wanna be landing if you're doing it up shots. I mean, I'm at 90%, which is pretty solid. I would probably spend the majority of my time getting my 25 and 30 footers up to that 80 or 90% comfortability, and then, 
moving back into my circle two while always warming up and always making sure that I'm still feeling good on 15 to 20 footers. But if you're missing a lot of those 15 and 20 footers, definitely just stay there for a while and practice making putts. Get yourself to where you're making more than 50% at each of those places before you move back a little bit. So it's hard for me to give a recommendation right now just as to how is best to putt these, but I would definitely recommend starting closer to the basket and making sure that your radius of feeling really confident putting moves out. But out of those 100 putts, I made 60, so 60% 60 out of all of that. I'm interested to see who beat me. So head on over to the Facebook group, which is gonna be linked in the description. And I'll also put in the link to that Google Sheet where you can track yourself, everything that you're doing throughout the week. But next week, we're gonna be talking a lot about forehands as well as giving an update on everything that's going on in Project 100. I am very excited to work together on growing this distance with you guys there, where I try to get to 510, 520 feet on backhand, 425, 450 feet on forehand. And I hope you guys can improve a ton along the way as well. Also, make your putts. Let me know what else you wanna see during the series because I have a ton of stuff already planned, but I am needing to build out because we're doing this through February 11th, which is two days after my birthday and essentially a full three months to work on our off-season training, about 12 weeks. So there'll be plenty of videos, plenty of time to add that 100 feet of distance. But while I'm bombing this guy right over here, go ahead and check out the video about how I got good fast, how I'm throwing far, and a little bit more of my homework. So see you there. That thing is flippy. Holy cow. It wasn't quite a bomb, but it's all good. See you there.